In this last video, I'm going to cover the long-term behavior for absorbing Markov chains. A couple of properties of absorbing chains to start. The first is that regardless of the initial state of the absorbing Markov chain, the chain will enter an absorbing state and remain there in a finite number of steps. Two, the powers of the transition matrix T approach a fixed matrix T hat, and we'll call that the stability matrix. Three, the long-term trend depends on the initial state. This last property three is what differentiates an absorbing Markov chain from a regular Markov chain. For regular chains, the long-term outcome doesn't depend on the initial probability distribution P of zero. You always end up with the same equilibrium vector. For absorbing Markov chains, there is a dependence on the initial state. Let's do a few examples finding the stability matrix, and I'll walk through the steps as we go through the examples. Beginning with a three by three transition matrix, that represents an absorbing Markov chain with three states. We'll order the states as one, two, three. Notice that we have ones on the diagonal for state one and state three. That means state ones and three are absorbing states. Now we'll start by finding the standard form of T, which means bring all the absorbing states up front in your transition matrix T. Our absorbing states are one and three, so we'll put them first and then leave two until the end. Because one and three are absorbing states, their columns contain a one on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. For the column for state two, we'll have to rearrange the entries, the probabilities. The probability of moving from state two to state one is 0.65, state two to state three is 0.25, and state two to itself is 0.1. That's your standard form. Now, to continue with the next steps, it's helpful to divide this into blocks. Choosing to do so so that you have the identity matrix in the top left all grouped together, and zeros below it, and then the remaining blocks we'll call R and Q. The second step is now to go and find the fundamental matrix F, which is equal to I minus Q inverse. In this example, Q is a one by one matrix with just the entry point one. The one by one identity matrix would be a matrix containing just the entry one. All right, so we'll take one minus 0.1 inverse or 0.9 inverse, which is equal to one over 0.9, and let's rewrite that as 10 ninths. Now, we're going to compute R times F. The matrix R is the upper right block from the standard form, and that was equal to 0 0.65, 0 0.25 taking the product with our fundamental matrix F, which is a one by one containing 10 ninths, we get the vector with entries 0.722 and 0.278, where I've had to round off a little bit here. Finally, the stability matrix T hat is formed by putting the identity matrix and all zeros below it back where they were in the standard form, then replacing the top right block with RF and all zeros below that. I'll put the labels for the states back in the same way that they were for the standard form. Now, if I were to read off the stability matrix, it would say that if the Markov chain began in the non-absorbing state two with probability about 0.722, it will eventually be absorbed into state one. And with probability 0.278, it will eventually be absorbed into state three.
let's repeat the process for a stability matrix that's four by four this time. Again, we'll start with the states just ordered one, two, three, four. Find the absorbing states, which are two and three, and then get the standard form of T by putting the absorbing states two and three first. That gives us the identity matrix and a block of all zeros below it. And then we'll have to rearrange the columns for one and four. State one, it can move to state two with probability a half, to state one with probability a quarter, and state four with probability a quarter. State four moves to one 50% of the time and four 50% of the time. Here's our standard form. Again, we'll break it into four blocks with an identity and a zero on the left, and then blocks we'll call R and Q on the right. Now find the fundamental matrix F by taking I minus Q inverse, where this time I is a two by two identity matrix to go with the two by two matrix Q, a fourth, a half, a fourth, a half. Taking the difference of these matrices, we have three fourths minus a half minus a fourth a half. And then we'll invert using the usual two by two formula. We have one over the determinant times the matrix with entries a half, a half, a fourth, three fourths. Now that scalar out front ends up being four. So altogether the fundamental matrix is two, two, one, three. All right now we'll multiply that by the matrix R from the top right block of the standard form. R was a half zero zero for our example here. Then the product RF is one, one, zero, zero. And our stability matrix T hat has a two by two identity block, RF, and then all zeros for the bottom two rows. Relabeling with the absorbing states first, we had two, three, one, four. The long-term behavior for this Markov chain is that with probability one, chains starting in state one will be absorbed into state two, and with probability one, chains starting in state four will also be absorbed into state two. Now the next example I want to combine with an application. Consider a community which begins a campaign to convince homeowners to convert to solar energy. And the leaders estimate that the probability of homeowners changing energy sources each year is given by the following transition matrix, where electric and fossil are the other two types of energy. Let's find the probability that a homeowner currently using electric will eventually use solar energy for home heating. Now, anytime you're asked to find eventual behavior, long-term behavior, that means go through the process of finding the stability matrix for your absorbing chain. So let's start there. The only absorbing state is S, the solar state. So we'll rewrite in standard form by placing state S first. That'll give us a one on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else in column one. Then we have to rearrange E. Electric can go to solar with probability 0 0.5, 0.5, to electric 0.9, and to fossil 0 0.05. Someone using fossil transitions to solar with probability 0.1, to electric with probability 0.15, and remains using fossil fuels with probability 0.75. Right. This is our standard form. The top block is the one by one identity matrix. We have a vector of zeros below it. And then the remaining two blocks are R and Q, as always. 
Now find the fundamental matrix I minus Q inverse, where I is the two by two identity. Q is our lower right block, 0 0.9, 0 0.15, 0 0.05, 0 0.75. The difference is the matrix 0 0.1 minus 0 0.15 minus 0 0.05 and 0.25. And then we'll invert using our usual formula. One over the determinant. times the matrix 0 0.25, 0 0.15, 0 0.05, and 0.1. The determinant is 0 0.0175. So if we divide each entry of the matrix by 0 0.0175, we'll end up with F being about 14.29, 8.57, 2.86 and 5.71, where I'm rounding things a bit here as well. Now, we take the product RF. R was 0 0.05.1. Multiply that together with the F that we have above. The result ends up being 1, 1. The stability matrix T hat is then the matrix with the one by one identity, our RF, which is one one, and all zeros everywhere else. Now recall the reordered states were solar, electric, fossil. So the probability that a homeowner that initially had electric ends up using solar energy is one. And that makes sense since S was the only absorbing state, right? eventually the chain will always end up absorbed into solar energy. All right, now one additional thing for absorbing Markov chains. The IJ entry of your fundamental matrix F tells you the average number of times the process that starts in a non-absorbing state J is expected to be in state I before proceeding on to an absorbing state. So it tells you on average how long or how many visits you'll spend in a particular state before eventually being absorbed. Let's use this information to find the expected number of years until a homeowner who is currently using fossil fuels converts to solar energy. I'll put the fundamental matrix back up on the screen. And it talks about the non-absorbing states, which were electric and fossil. Now, the expected number of years a homeowner that begins in fossil fuels converts, spends before converting to solar energy, is equal to the sum of the second column. They expect to spend 8.57 years using electric and 5.71 years using fossil before switching to solar. Altogether, that's 14.28 years before being absorbed into the solar energy state. 